If you're watching this, you're looking for a way to level up, to get better at video editing and save time. You're on a mission to find the most useful plugins on the market. Well, congratulations, you found one. Excalibur is a remarkably powerful tool that is made specifically to save you time, as much of it as possible. And the best thing is, from what I've seen, it's only gonna get better as time goes on. About a month ago, I made a review on the Elgato Stream Deck. It's a really awesome device. It's great for live streaming, which I do over on my gaming channel. But the more I looked into it, the better this device was for productivity. You could assign some very basic functions and effects inside of Premiere Pro to the Stream Deck, but it was super limited. After spending a little bit of time researching and trying to figure out how I could make it all work together, I came across Excalibur. And I said in that video that I would love the opportunity to be able to work with these guys, test the plugin, probably end up buying it for myself, but I shot them an email and they sent me a version of it to try for free. So enough rambling, let's head over to the PC and talk about what makes Excalibur as good as it is, some of the drawbacks and a solution that I've actually kind of created for myself and I'm sharing with you. Okay, so when you get into Premiere, if you go up to Window and then Extensions, you will find Excalibur. Open that guy up and you'll be presented with this funky looking window. For now, hit the General and you'll be able to see you have a couple of options here to change keyboard shortcuts. And then the only other thing you really have to pay attention to is this guy right here where it says Enable Instant Search Bar. I recommend you turn it on if you can. And then let's go back to Commands and we can take a look at all of this. This right here is why I needed this plug. Plugin. From this window right here, you can assign keyboard shortcuts to any effect, preset, or functionality within Premiere Pro in seconds. As an example, let's go ahead and make a brand new command. We're going to call this a zoom in. Very simple, right? Now we're going to add a command. Scale. Select the value. You can also change it so that it modifies the existing value by a certain percentage. But for now, we'll just set it to 125. Once that's all done, you want to go ahead and assign it to a keyboard shortcut. So for this example, I'm going to do Control, Shift, and 8. Press OK. And then, as you can see, select your clip, Control, Shift, 8, and your effect is applied and it automatically sets the scale. So immediately that eliminates the need to look for an effect, to drag it onto your clip, adjust the values. You can do everything straight away at the tap of your fingertips. So if you use constant transitions where you zoom into certain areas, this is perfect. Now let's say that we want to add more to it. So we've got a little scale in already, but what if we want to add a black and white filter on top? And then just for good measure, we can even rotate the clip by three degrees. I don't know why you would want to do that, but it's an example. So we're keeping the same keyboard shortcut, and what it's gonna do, if we go down here now, Control Shift 8, it's gonna apply all of those effects all at once. It just works. If you're as passionate of an editor as I am, or perhaps you do this for work, working for clients, and you constantly use the same effects in different ways, zooming in for retention and things like that, you realize how amazing this is. Almost as amazing as you tapping that subscribe button right now to see more of my giant forehead. Now, in addition to doing the standard stuff like scales, position, rotation, you can actually go ahead and get it to work with a bunch of your own presets, effects, filters, things like that. So let's say you're a fan of Finzar, he's an amazing editor, a great YouTube creator, and you buy one of his preset packs. You can then assign any of those presets to any keyboard shortcut within Premiere. The same goes for some of my presets. You can grab some of them and apply them through Excalibur into Premiere as well. But before you start thinking this is an all-in-one solution, you've seen a clip in a video and now you're ready to go uh, let me just give you one little disclaimer, and this one issue could be a huge pain in the backside. Just as an example, if we go ahead and grab one of these, this is an effect that I've made myself, it's a very simple zoom in transition. We're going to zoom up here to the top right, like so. And there we go. Nice and simple, works absolutely perfectly as expected. Now this is the issue, let's remove that. We're gonna find that exact same plugin inside of Premiere. Control Shift 7, we've assigned it a hotkey. Go back into Premiere and then let's apply it. And this is where it gets a bit weird. See that little jump? That wasn't there the first time. And let me make one thing clear. This is of no fault of the developer behind Excalibur. It's an issue with Premiere and their ability, their, their unwillingness to really play nice with third-party developers. The issue, as you can see it right here, is the Bezier, the these little funky keyframe looking fellas right here. See, this is what it looks like when you apply the effect through Excalibur. This is not what it's meant to look like. There's no smooth transition. Premiere doesn't let third-party apps work well with these guys. If we then just drag it on, this is what it's meant to look like. See how you have this nice curve? Apply the effect again and you'll notice the curve is gone. 
it doesn't bloody exist anymore and unfortunately that means that a lot of the presets and the packs that you already have will not work properly with Excalibur you may still get some good results but if they involve these bazir keyframe looking things it's probably not going to work as intended I've spoken with the developers behind Excalibur we've had a couple of discussions about features and things like that and he said that they're working on a kind of temporary fix as it were but the issue isn't on their side so they're very limited as to what they can do to actually fix this so uh, I actually Actually took the liberty of making something to resolve parts of that issue. I've actually got to made a entire preset pack and this will be completely available to you for free. There's a link in the description. And these presets are made specifically to work with Excalibur. But I mean, if you could go and buy the, the original preset pack that I made, there's way more effects, there's way more transitions and all that good stuff. And it looks smoother, it's animated better. But with that said, you shouldn't encounter any issues using these through Excalibur because none of these effects use Bezier keyframes. So let's say we're going to do that same effect again. Zoom in top right and just like that it zooms in. I've already got the keyboard shortcuts loaded up but this is the exact same transition. I've just got it set up so that I can run it through my stream deck which is something we're going to talk about in a second. Tap OK and then at a touch of a button we're going to apply the effect and as you can see the animation is exactly the same because there aren't any of those fancy keyframes. You still get the motion blur and a nice zoom in effect and everything else, but you just don't get that like ease in that you would get if you use Bazir keyframes. It helps mitigate some of these issues that you may be facing if you've already bought the plugin. And like I said, this is available 100% for free. Link in the description down below. Okay, so while we're here, I should probably talk about some of the other features that come with Excalibur because they sent it to me for free. I said I would review it. I should probably review everything rather than just the stuff that I really love. <laughs> so the other primary feature of Excalibur is the fact that you have this. It's a search bar. Remember when we were in this window and we had the option to unsheath Excalibur? Let's unsheath it. Typically tap the button and you'll be presented with this box. You can then search for any effect, any preset, any filter. Excalibur even has its own functions and stuff built into this, but this is like, I think, what most people will come here for rather than the keyboard shortcuts. And as you can see, you can go ahead and look for a scale. And not only does it come up with the user command that we set earlier on, which could be like a macro function, adding multiple things at one time. Time, you can also just add a very simple scale effect. Positions, transitions like dip to black, volume adjustments, nesting clips, exporting frames, videos, and even one of the coolest features that I think is specifically made for Excalibur is exporting individual clips by themselves, which is great if you're like a colorist and you color grade a clip you want to send to a client rather than like going through the whole export thing to be able to select a tiny window and you source in and source out. Just let this do it for you. And what's really cool about this search bar is that it isn't just a search bar okay so let's say we're going to go ahead and add a scale what you can do see this little arrow right here you can either tap it or you can use your keyboard entirely and you can set the value so we could just straight up put 125 and it does it there's no adjusting anything dragging over here coming over to this window it's just it's done it just works if we chop this clip in half put the playhead to the middle dip to black you can also then apply the transition to the blake head and everything else and then you can change the duration of the transition all from this one little function right here so let's go 20 frames apply transition and it's it's done that's that's it that's the whole thing. There's also another function which I think is specific to this plugin. But let's say you have a bunch of clips. And I did this recently for a wedding video. What I had to do in this one specific scenario, which may just be me blathering on at this point. But for each of these clips, I had to slow it down because it was shot in 60 FPS. I had to slow it down by 50%, which made it half the speed. Slow motion, right? But then I needed to add a warp stabilizer. You can't do that because then this pops up. Warp stabilizer and speed can't be used on the same clip. So what you then have to do is nest them all, but I don't think there's a way to do this within Premiere other than just nest clip. Nest clip. Nest clip. This is without Excalibur, right? Even if you select them all and nest it, obviously you're just gonna get one big nest. With Excalibur, you can then highlight them all, nest, individual clips, Premiere Pro, and it does it for look, hands free, baby. It's doing everything. It's alive. Again, I know this is like very specific to my needs, <laughs> but it's just so useful. And then you could just warp stabilizer. Boom. The effect is applied to every single thing like that. 
<laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to make an entirely separate video on this topic specifically, but I did want to kind of talk about my integration with Excalibur and Stream Deck working simultaneously. I know your time is valuable, so I'll kind of speed through this process real quick. Like I said, this is the main reason why I got Excalibur because I got the Stream Deck and I was like, okay, cool, let's see how useful this is on a day-to-day -day work environment and it's incredible. Because now, thanks to Excalibur, I can now assign all of these keyboard shortcuts to my Stream Deck and at a press of a button, and this is going to be the most ghetto way of doing it imaginable because I'm using my phone handheld, <laughs> but I can actually go ahead and add in effects at the top of a button with the Stream Deck. Voila. <laughs> How cool is this? The zooms, transitions, things like that, that's just one element of it. I can actually go ahead and add in an entire adjustment layer just by tapping a button on the stream deck, which is awesome. I can add a warp stabilizer to the clip if I wanted to. I could go ahead and add motion shake to the clip. <laughs> That one took a while to happen because there's a bunch of keyframes, but it, it worked, I promise. <laughs> Honestly, this little routine that I've got myself in, being able to integrate all this stuff together, saves me hours on every single project that I make. I create between three to 10 videos per week, and it's when you have that massive workload that you need things like this to be able to speed it up as much as possible. And when I say that Excalibur has quite literally changed the way that I edit, the way that I do what I do, I mean it, and you can see why and how it does it. To set the Stream Deck up with Excalibur and Premiere is super easy, by the way. Start off by doing what I told you to do earlier on, just setting up the keyboard shortcuts, managing your effects and getting like a list of everything that you want to happen, happen. We'll open up the Stream Deck software and as you can see, if I navigate to my Premiere stuff, all these are, are just hotkeys. So let's say I wanted the zoom in to happen with the Stream Deck, all you want to do is assign that same keyboard shortcut, rename it, and when you go back into Premiere, it works. It, it just, it's so easy. And just as a bit of a teaser, I, I think I'm allowed to say this, if not, I'll probably get in trouble in one way or another, but <laughs> when I was speaking to some of the developers, they did say they were working on native support for the Stream Deck. So I imagine they're working on a plugin that works natively with the Stream Deck plugin store and everything is going to be managed directly from the Stream Deck app. Now, I have no idea when it's coming, if it's even in development, but I know that that's something that they want to do and that is incredibly exciting. Final thoughts, I think, is pretty clear. This plugin, Excalibur, is now an essential part of my workflow and I know for a fact that I would lose so much time without it. It. As simple as that. Once again, this video is not a paid review. They may have sent it to me for free, but I'm under no obligation to say that it's great if it's absolute trash. Maybe I got my hopes up for something that I thought was going to be great and it turned out to be rubbish, but that is 100% not the case. I think when you watch videos like this, you always assume that there's some kind of agenda behind it. There's not. It is genuinely hard to find something other than the keyframe thing that is bad about this plugin. It's actually kind of annoying because now I want to try everything that these guys make. Like Excalibur is probably their golden child, right? But then they have so many other options, so many other plugins available. This sounds like a plug, right? But genuinely, I look on the website and I see things like Watchtower, which helps sync your folders on your PC to Premiere Pro. There's no file management issues, like everything is done for you. Chronicler is a plugin that helps monitor and track the amount of time that you spend in Premiere Pro. So if you're working for a client, maybe on an hourly basis, or you just want some statistics on what you're doing in Premiere, you can send all of that information to the client and everything is kind of done for you. Grave Robber and Anchor help you with some basic functions that should be in Premiere Pro anyway, natively, such as helping with anchor points and unnesting multi-track sequences and things like that. Like these should not be issues really with Premiere, but they are. They're personally things that I struggle with and now I want to go and check out everything else that they have available. Oh, and pss, guess what? I got an exclusive look at something they're working on called- cool. Oh, what? It's top secret, but it's gonna revolutionize the way that we edit video again. Damn! Seriously, it's a really cool plugin. If you're on the edge because it's a little bit on the pricier side, or maybe you're hesitant about the keyframe thing, honestly, if you can work around that, just that one keyframe issue, this thing is 100% worth the price. Okay, Knights of the Editing Table, thank you again for sending this out to me. I really appreciate it. I love your faces, and if you wanna see more videos like this, tap the subscribe button, like the video if you liked it, and I'll catch you in the next one.